Minecraft. Does anyone here have this game? And if so, when do you remember getting it? But most importantly, what was your first thing to do in that game? If I got it right, you have to subscribe. So yeah, today I'm going to be trying to beat Minecraft Legacy Console Edition without getting any wood. Now, before we begin, we're going to set some ground rules. Number one, I cannot obtain anything related to wood except two things, sticks and the bed. The reason why sticks are allowed is because it can be obtained in multiple ways besides just getting wood. And the bed, as it's very mandatory for spawn points, and if I die without a bed, I start right at the beginning. Everything else like wood must reach three criteria in order to count as wood. 1. The item has something related to wood. Number 2. If it makes this sound while I mine it. And number 3. If they can be directly crafted into something else, like the boat or fletching table. Rule 2. If all criteria is met in obtaining the wood, I must restart the run. And finally, but not least, number 3. Where I must kill the ender dragon and get its dragon egg into our hands. With the big three rules covered, I think we are ready to start this run. And as we load into our new world, where we don't mind one at all, we can see that we're exactly in the middle of nowhere. So after running around countlessly for about 10 seconds, I pull up my map and put it in my offhand. I then proceed to mine leaves for sticks and food, like apples. After getting rid of every single leaf on the tree, I got a questionable amount of sticks, or stick. I tried another tree, and again, I only got one stick, but this time I got two apples. Afterwards, I find myself near a shipwreck after doing some weird stuff, and obtained coal, potatoes, and wheat. And after wasting a bit of food, my next priority was animals, and since I had no weapon, I had to use a stick. And as I continue my search for some more animals, I find myself a very special guest, the Lava Lake. We'll definitely come back to this soon, and let me just tell you right now, it is awesome that we have that Lava Lake. And right after getting out of the horrible forest that the Lava Lake was in, I found potentially the greatest lifesaver of the game. Because if you aren't aware, crafting tables can only be found in certain villages, and this is indeed one of them. But it's not always 100%. But on this very village, this one house has a crafting table. Very lucky. And from there, my priority suddenly went back to food. And with whatever we crafted, we have enough bread to last us the entire run. Hopefully. My next goal was to kill the Iron Golem, and without much being said, it took a very long time. And after a full minute, no exaggeration, I finally killed him and got 5 iron. And with that, we have completed our first day without getting wood. I then decide to craft an iron pickaxe so that way when we do need more iron, we can just mine it. Mine was definitely a good choice. <laughs> Shut up. And as we walk out with six iron into our pockets, we go to the blast furnace that we saw over there to smelt the iron there. You know, while things are going handy right now, things are about to get a little bit spicier when we go to the nether. But as I wait for the iron to smell, without hesitation, I break some dead bushes to get sticks out of them. And after collecting the rest of the iron, we can make multiple things like an iron sword, a bucket, and some flint and steel once we have it. And with maximum thought, I also decided to craft an iron shovel so that way we can get blocks for the ender dragon fight later on. And after we collect a bed, reminder that doesn't count, we can rush back to the lava lake with a water bucket in hand. And here is where I show you the forbidden trick that basically everybody knows now. And keep in mind that this is my version, so yours is probably different. There we go! Since the water flows down very easily, we don't have to collect another bucket and we can easily enter in the nether. As the distortion effects get stronger and stronger, we finally transport into the nether. 
and after some portal protection and an explorer around the nether to find where the nether fortress is, I went back through and slept the night again. And as soon as we get right back into the nether, we can see that we're not going to have fun with this ghast. Because if you do not know what power ghasts have in this version of the game, then oh boy, that means you haven't played the game yet. And as we dig our way to the nether fortress, we can hop down, find a blaze spawner, and get those rods. And here is a blaze spawner with floating gravel. Yeah, I just thought I mentioned that. And after 8 minutes of hard work killing blazes, I finally got the 7 rods we needed to go back to the overworld. But just to be sure so I wouldn't mess up, I killed a lot more blazes. And then left the wasteland. Oh, and I slept again by the way. This next morning will be the one day that I become 10,000 IQ. Because if you didn't know, sticks aren't the only way to gain villager trades. Because if you get lucky enough, there will be a stone cutter at the village, and if you find a villager with that job, you can trade in 10 pieces of clay for one emerald. And according to my experience, I need 80 emeralds to enter the end. However, this route isn't 100%, but it's well optimized. When I got back to the village, I crafted myself a brewing stand, and find our way over here to figure out that there is a stone cutter in this house. Along with that, I also had to break multiple jobs for the villagers to get the right one, like the cauldron, or even this. Here is gonna be our cleric. It's not filling up. What are you, a joke? Wait. Now it's up for debate. It can be mined with a pickaxe. I don't think I'm gonna count it as wood. And since that block didn't meet all the wood criteria, it doesn't count and we can freely continue. So now our goal is to get as much clay as we can to trade it into the villager to form more emeralds. And that went on for about 5 minutes before I started trading for emeralds. I'm also using a strategy where if I break the job the villager was last in, it resets the time that you have to wait for it to trade again, thus me having 40 emeralds by the end of the day. Final and after waking up from the bed, we can continue using the stone mason to continue to give us emeralds. And while I was getting the final pieces of clay, I got an interesting weapon from a drowned. And when we return to trade all that in, we run into a bit of an issue, or rather the issue runs into us, because apparently this guy won't be able to trade anymore. Now I don't know how or why this could happen, but I do know that I never saw that guy again. And when I mean never saw again, I mean I never even saw the new one. This means our look has to be above and beyond in order to get to the end. So after doing the four stages with the cleric, we can move on to the next task. We can craft our eyes of ender and throw on to see where it goes. And now all we have to do is follow that direction and hope we get lucky. And luck, well we weren't, because the next eye I threw headed in the same direction and broke. Why? And then when we were triangulating, it happened again! Why? Thankfully, we were able to get into the stronghold without wasting any more eyes. And with the help of partial x-ray bugs and pathfinding, we eventually found the end portal room isolated. So I had to dig there in the worst way possible. But then, I noticed something horrible. We are one eye short. I found an ender pearl in a chest a little earlier before I found this, but it was unfortunately not enough. My first thought was, why don't I kill endermen? They have a 50% chance of dropping an ender pearl anyway, so why don't I just try? So I water bucketed my way back up and AFK'd till nightfall. And after minutes going through the night, I found an enderman, looked at it, and it tried to attack me. However, when I killed the enderman, it never dropped the ender pearl. Okay, that's fine, I'll just go find another one. And only minutes later, I found another Enderman. And when I killed this Enderman, it never dropped a pearl again. But then I found one almost instantly and looked at it and then he tried to attack me. And once again, when he was dead, he never dropped the pearl. Like, why? Only seconds later, I found another one, but almost died. But guess what happened when I kill it? Yep, no Ender Pearl. And that would be the last Enderman I would see for the night before desperately giving up and then running back to the village so I can get one more Ender Pearl. And how did I do it? Well, I got emeralds from my boat. And finally, after getting the one or two Ender Pearls that we need, we can finally run all the way back to the End Portal and finally open into the portal. 
However, it's from here on out that no more rules apply since we cannot physically mine any wood or craft anything else that is illegal for this run. And as we clash for our victory with the Ender Dragon, we can feel something special inside. We have done it. We have officially beat Minecraft without getting a single wooden block. Oh wait. Okay, now we have. And that should easily answer the question. Can we beat Minecraft without getting a single wood block? Yes, you can. And if this somehow comes out for a surprise for you, then that should be cool. Because I took only two hours to complete this run. And we're only scraping the surface. If this video hits 35 likes, I will do a no melee run in Minecraft. So yeah, that's about it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we're trying to get 500 subscribers. And from the past few days, we've gained a lot of subscribers. And we're only 10% of the way there. So consider it as you will, but don't make it your first priority. And thank you all for watching. See you next time. Thank you.